All right, brothers and sisters, friends and family, how are you doing? Much love to everybody out there. Truly much love. I would like to come before you guys and give you guys a little bit of a an incredible praise report and incredible um, just fruits, really, that are being harvested out in the prison ministry. And this is a brother, and I, I'm going to keep him kind of uh, anonymous because he's, uh, he's one of these dudes that um, he ran a, like a, a large gang, like a really, really large gang of people and he ran like a hundred different dudes under him and so um this is one of these guys that came when i first talked to him he didn't want to talk to anybody he, he uh he got thrown on death row because he would not say a word to anybody out there at all so he went through his entire trial he went through all of his stuff and he, he wouldn't talk to anybody and when i first started talking to him he he didn't want to talk to me either he thought i was he didn't know who i was he didn't know why this dude would be coming popping off over here and so he, he and I had a, he, he had some words. I was always really super cool. And then about the same time we had some words, he, uh, his Yah scriptures arrived into his cell and he was blown away that there was somebody like myself who was out there, um, trying to reach them. And then we would just send them a hundred dollar Bible. And so this is a dude who is a very hardened criminal that's on death row that is, um, basically been thrown away. And, uh, he was not, he didn't, he hated religion. He hated everything about it. And, um, now this is the stories that are, are coming out of death row. So I want to read this all with you guys. He goes, Shalom brother. How are you? How are you all? I'm good. I, I respect the seventh, the Sabbath more than I have in the past. God gave me a day of rest for a reason, but we failed to take advantage of it. It's funny how human minds don't think on it. Like it's unless it's being led don't think on its its own, I think is what he means, unless it's being led. We believe what we were told. I was misled, but now I see. And this this whole statement that he's talking about is simply because um, I think it was on Shabbat. I'm like, hey, this is a Shabbat, or I think it was actually a day before Shabbat. I was writing to him, and I said, hey, you know what? Tomorrow's the seventh day. Today's a prep day. This is what this means, and this is why it is. And he comes from a basic religious background, and now all of a sudden things are starting to fall into place. Now, this is what he continued on and said. Before I read the Yah scriptures, before I read the Yah scriptures, I'll ask Yahuwah for knowledge and wisdom to understand his words and commands. The more I'm learning, the more the stories show me life. We need to learn the commands and we need to take heed before it's too late. Then he goes on. He goes, how are your scriptures was wrong for what they done? God don't like ugly. Everything they done will come back on them in the day of judgment. You did what needed to be done. Thanks for my copy of Yah scriptures. It's getting put to use. What they did to the Indians was unjustifiable. And to think we celebrate Thanksgiving to that. I stopped celebrating pagan days. My uncle always says this day or that day is not in my Bible. So why are you con condoning to that? Uh, wake up, nephew. And I did. And so um, this, is, uh, this, is, this next part, it doesn't actually mean anything because you guys wouldn't understand it. But he's talking about, in this part, he's talking about his gang and about his tribe and about the people prior to that. And... Um, this is what that was. Now, I want to go on to this because he goes, my wife wanted me to be more open. I didn't trust any, anyone, especially if they were an outsider, to be honest. I didn't trust her either. That's why we are not together. Some people are out to get what they could from you, their own personal gain. She was one of those. I'm not mad at her, though. Only the strong survive. To me, Seventh-day Adventist was just another man-made religion. They went to church on Sabbath, so they wasn't following commands. I believe what the Bible say not what people interpret. I know I was living lawless under God, under God's law, but all of that is changing for the best. I've repented my sins now and I'm looking to get baptized. The sinner's prayer they teach us is not in the Bible. The words say to repent and get baptized for the remission of your sins, not say this and uh, you're saved. Piss on my back and tell me it's rainfall. Lol. How foolish to believe anything. So, um, guys, this is a hardened dude. This is a hardened criminal dude. That is now sitting here worshiping our Elohim that is looking for the future, that is looking for his commandments. This is called fruit being born. This is an incredible mission. Every single week, I am blessed by this job that I'm doing here on death row and being able to talk to these guys. And today was another long day of typing letters. If I skip a day, regardless of when it is, I get inundated. There's just too many of them. And so continuing on with this, he goes, Paige is my great grandfather and my dad. I was born Terrell, but Paige got added once I was in school. Imagine growing up in school and all the white teachers see that name and assume a white girl, but in steps a black kid. The joke's on who? Many fights because of that name. 
Now, the last little part of this I, I think is very, very important. He goes, following God's laws and commands have opened up doors that was once closed. I now see the glory I'm supposed to have. I will receive what's due to me. I'm focused on heavenly blessings because this life will perish with everything else. Love will continue forever. Faith enables us to continue, come to God, but love enables us to imitate him. Guys, that's hardcore stuff out of the guy on death row, right? I get more wisdom out of these guys on death row than I can get from my mother in a spiritual sense. I hear all these people and these Christians on YouTube that have no value for the laws of our creator. And then we have this guy who's sitting on death row that he's got it figured out. Now, he, we're talking, the last thing is uh, commandment number 11. Uh, it should be number one. And do you guys want to know what commandment number 11 is? Which is the biggest, largest commandment in all of scriptures? It's to guard the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator. It's reiterated over 53 times. And here we have a dude on death row who says that should be commandment number one. And I agree. I agree. But our creator has put that in and where he has put it in. So... Guys, um, this is amazing stuff that's coming out of there. If any one of you guys want to be active in this death row ministry, in this, in this prison ministry, it doesn't necessarily have to be on death row. Guys, give me a holler. J-B-O-S-S-0-0-8 at gmail.com. J-B-O-S-S-0-0-8 at gmail.com. I will set you up with an account. We'll throw some stamps on there for you guys so you guys can communicate. I'll teach you guys how to do it. And we can help build this kingdom. And we can find this, guys. This is a... This is a great place to be. And these brothers and sisters are, um, they're very special people. They've done a lot of bad stuff, but I don't think that they're outside the range of the kingdom to come. So with that, much love. Have a good day, everybody.